All right, so um, I can't use my normal recording software to record not game stuff. So, um, and I didn't realize my recording software for some reason didn't have a mic attached to it. I said it did, but it didn't. So it was a dead silent video and I already did all this. This is my tier list for this season. Obviously, Mercy sucks ass. She's down here. Life Uber sucks ass. He's down here. Ayari sucks ass. She's down here. This is because I am about between silver and gold. I'm in the lower ranks. So down here, a lot of people don't know how to play characters properly. Um, I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did before because that was a 46 minute video. And, um... <clears throat> Why is my sound muted? Bitch. But anyway. So it's going to be hard to explain because I've forgotten all the reasons. Mercy. With the healing reduction that DPS give. Her healing just sucks. And unless your DPS are good. Already. It's not even worth it to try to play her. Life Weaver. He was mostly played at my ranks for the healing. I like to play him for not only the healing, <clears throat> but also to protect people and, like, shoot my thorns from afar and fuck people up. But not a lot of people play him like that in my ranks. So, with healing being such crap this season, he's not very good in my ranks. Ayari, kind of the same way. A lot of people don't know that with her gun, you're supposed to let it charge to do the most damage. They just constantly fire it off as fast as they can. And people know how to shoot the pylon. They know to shoot the pylon. And since they know to shoot the pylon, her main source of healing is her beam. Which doesn't do much and doesn't last very long. Cass kind of sucks. A lot of people know how to deal with him. It's easy to headshot him on any character now. Even though he can headshot you really easily too. But people have been shitting on Cass for ages. It's still no different. Uh, Farah also down here. A lot of people don't know how to play her yet. Very well, probably. Since they changed her. Um, and a lot of people finally learn to shoot the Pharaoh for the most part. And with the fact that the, the healing reduction that DPS have exists... She, a lot of people are more likely to shoot her to get rid of her faster, especially because, sorry, my cats are being a disaster. Aren't they always? But especially because she is a threat, but she doesn't do enough damage or enough consistent damage for her to be that good at my rates. Ryan... Well, I have seen a lot of Ryan. It's just never that good. They get absolutely completely melted way too fast. And it sucks. Because I have a friend who's a Ryan main and he will try to force Ryan into everything and get his ass handed to him. Hog, kind of the same. Everyone looks at him and he just explodes now. Anna. Her healing doesn't do enough, and she's single target healing, so it really sucks. And with Kiri being played all the time, her nade doesn't do much unless you're using it on your own team. Her damage just isn't enough either. Sleep dart doesn't work very well on anyone that's a tank because of how short it is. And she has zero mobility, and with these type of characters being really strong, Ana's just in a bad spot. Doom, at my rank, Dooms are stupid <laughs> and they suck. They want to just dive into the enemy team using all their cooldowns and then explode. That's all they do. Echo kind of in the same spot as Pharah. You'd think, you know, she was fairly good last season. I have a friend who really likes playing Pharah. Or not Pharah, fucking, I'm stupid. 
he really, really likes playing Echo. That was his main for ages. And even he's like, she don't feel good this season because her movement is so predictable that it's easy to shoot her down out of the air. And since she can't get healed as easily, it just makes her weaker. Queen, while I love Queen to bits, is not good. Kiri is always really strong, so her alt does pretty much nothing. With the healing nerf as a passive, she can't heal anything, so she just gets exploded way too fast. Because she can't be kept up. She can't keep herself up. It's the same with him. He can't keep himself up either. Because of the nerf to healing. He just explodes. Sojourn is okay if you're good at Sojourn. But other than that, a lot of people, if you can't hit your rail shots, you're just not going to do anything with her. Um, Bap... His more AoE healing is pretty good. Uh, Immortality Field was always good. But it's just not enough. And a lot of people focus the bat for some reason. I guess it makes sense. You don't want the Immortality Field. But I've had so many Tracers come up, blink into the team, shoot the Immortality Field, and blink out. And that's about it. A lot of people at my rank, despite what a lot of people like to think at higher ranks, do know how to shoot the immortality field. So it doesn't really do much. Brig, while she does have AoE healing, it's never going to be enough. Her damage just really isn't enough. Her shield isn't, doesn't have enough health to really be worth anything. She's just kind of meh. Same with Moira. Her healing has been nerfed drastically. She can't keep herself up if she dives the back line. She just falls over. Um, her damage isn't actually is that much. The only reason why people think, oh, I played more and I had the most elims and the most damage. Yeah, it's because your orb just tickled someone for two damage and someone else killed them and that counted for your elim. That's all that is. Like, her coalescence can't keep anyone up anymore. There was a video of a Bastion shooting a Mei while she was in a Zen ult. And she just fell over. It was insane. Like, a lot of people are like, with Kiri, oh, an ability shouldn't counter a ult. But... Do you have any idea how many abilities in this game counter alts? Diva Matrix counters alts. Shields counter alts, depending on the shield, or on the ult. So those two. And her. Her little vortex, her little spinny, eats alts. His suck eats alts. Like, there are so many abilities abilities in this game that just make alts cease to exist that there's really no reason you can complain about anyone else being able to do it and most of those are in the tank role <clears throat> and now with the dps passive nerfing all healing in the game every dps can counter an alt without even doing anything if they're smart. Because a Bastion can kill a Mei inside of a Zen ult. If he's in turret form. And most Bastions go into turret form as soon as they get it. In my ranks. <clears throat> so, complaining that, oh, Kiri's Suzu counters my ult. Shut up. Just shut up. There are so many characters in this game that can eat and counter ults. You have no right to complain about it. Unless you want every single ability that can counter an ult taken out of the game. Because, oh, it has a short cooldown. Diva makes sure they're shorter. Sigma suck is shorter. Like, come on now. Um, but 
will go on to Winton. While he is really good, I've seen a lot of Winton being played and do well. There's also a lot of Wintons that dive in, drop their bubble, and just stay there. They don't jump back out. They don't do anything. They just stay there and die. Because no one can keep them up. And then they complain. And then switch to Hog. Because Hog has self-healing. And it's like, my guy, you're just, you're not. Come on now. Sim is up here because of her turrets. Her turrets can apply that healing debuff for as long as they're up and you're standing in them. And most likely you're just going to die. So, any close range map, Sim works really well. And it sucks. Reaper, Sam, if you're on a close range map, he can fuck you up. The only problem is, and the reason he's not higher, is because he, with his, with the healing passive that DPS have, well, with the healing nerf DPS have, they, his life leech doesn't work as well. I had a friend losing his mind last night, and I explained it to him three times, and he finally got it. And then switched to fair. That, that DPS passive nerfs every single type of healing in the game, including Life Leech. So he just can't stay alive as well. May is whatever. A lot of Mays at my rank. They go in after shooting a few of their little icicles. And then they spray the tank and then they use the block and then they come out of the block and they spray the tank and then they die. That's pretty much it. Uh, the only real threat with her is her ult. This little shit right here. I hated him before and I hate him now. His little, you know, the spam that everyone at this rank does with him is annoying. Because my team just walks into it, completely ignores that there's little grenades coming at them. And then they die because I can't keep them up. While I'm sitting off to the side, not trying to die to it. Finding a different way around. Like, kill me. Gingu, if he hits you with his little things from far away and then um, dives in, you're kind of fucked. Sorry, my mom texted me. I had to answer her. His ult, though, still sucks ass. <laughs> His ult's so bad. I tried to pocket him as a mercy. Didn't work. He just got focused and fell over. I tried nanoing him as Ana. He just got focused and fell over. It's, it's so bad. But, like, he is very viable purely because of that healing debuff he gives. And the fact that he can dive in and kill someone really fast with it. Ram is kind of whatever. A lot of Rams do well at my level because people freak out and they're like, oh, I can't get on point. What do I do? So they stay on point and they don't know how to deal with him, especially when he's using his alt. That's about it. Because otherwise, he just kind of explodes. Sigma, he's pretty good. If people at my rank knew how to cycle his cooldowns better, he'd be S tier. But they don't. They just leave the shield up until it explodes. And then they use their vortex. And then they die. But it creates enough time and distraction for his own team to be able to do something a lot of the time. Ash, even though she should be really good this season, like her dynamite is amazing this season. It just doesn't do enough I feel like I think it's because people don't know how to use her well they want to sit fairly close or they want to sit too far away and they just get picked off ball is more of a distraction like I know higher ranks are marking him as S tier but this is not high ranks this is low ranks this is the average and so many people We'll just roll around the map as ball, doing hardly anything. And then 
leave because at my ranks, at least I know for me, oh, there's a ball rolling around. Oh, well, hope he has fun. And then we just destroy his team. Because they don't create enough of a distraction. They don't do enough to make us worry about him. Orisa is very strong. But once she's out of her cooldown, she falls over. But at the same time, her cooldowns last long enough that her team can just roll the enemy team. So it all depends on if the rest of her team is good enough or not. Same with Zarya. A lot of people at my ranks don't know that if you can't kill the Zarya underneath, you don't shoot the fucking bubble. The amount of times I try to explain that to people and then they just ignore me. Or they'll be like, well, I'm not shooting it. And then two seconds later, I see them actively shooting her bubble. And I'm like, this is why we're all dying to an 94 charge Zarya, okay? Good God. And it sucks. I tried so many times to explain. I try to help. And, you know, well... People don't listen. Torbergorm is annoying. His gun, the little projectiles, are massive. His turret is annoying. And people, while they know how to shoot the pylon, and they know how to shoot the lamp, they do not know how to shoot turrets. They haven't figured that one out yet. And the amount of times I've just had been rolled over by a Torbjorn is so annoying. Lucio. You know what? I'm actually moving him down. See here. Why? Because even though he's really strong at higher ranks, a lot of people at my ranks do not know how to play him very well. They want to go into the back line and try to get picks in the back line and they just die. Or they stay with the team on healing or on speed without changing and it just causes the whole team to fall over. They don't know how to play him effectively. And I will admit, I am one of those. That's why I do not play him. Also, shit switching from his healing to his speed boost hurts my hand. <laughs> so I don't want to deal with him. Steve is fairly strong. She can heal a lot of damage. And if she gets knocked out of her mech, she has, you know, baby diva with a really small hitbox and might be able to escape, get her mech back, and go back in without ever dying. Um... She's good at diving in. She's good at diving out. So, and a lot of people in my ranks really like playing D.Va. And I understand. I love playing D.Va. She's my second highest, most char most played character. So, I understand. Of course, I haven't played her pretty much at all since Overwatch 2 dropped. Because <laughs> I don't like playing by myself on tank. That's why I just don't play tank very much. So soon she will probably be taken over by Kiri. Bastion, really good. He can dive in. Well, not dive. He does a dive. He can come around the corner, turret form, throw his grenade, and just melt the team. Because people, as soon as this, in my ranks, as soon as people see a turreted Bastion, they run and hide. They're scared of him. So just being present is enough to make people lose their shit. Uh, so, yeah. And he does a lot of damage. He can melt tanks like nobody else. It's just... That's just how it is. Hanzo. Big ass fucking arrows. Spam damage. That's all it is. I thought, you know, oh, he won't be able to one-shot people? No, it don't matter. He can still hit you from 80 miles away. Do 240 damage. And then hit you again in the toe and you die. Even though he wasn't aiming at you at all. And then you just throw those little storm arrows in. You're dead. There's just... He's absolutely dominating at lower ranks this season. And it's so annoying. Him. He's the character that people play if they can aim a little bit. Or if they come from other games. And that's the most type of character they know how to play. And then with his rockets... And now he's buffed because of that with the projectile size increase. He's a lot stronger. He can kill really easily. Tracer, 
most of the time when she's shooting at you, she's in your face. And with the projectile size increase, it's almost impossible for her to miss now. And she does a lot of damage. And she can zip around really easily. And it's really hard for people to deal with her. Like, I try as Kiri. I can usually hit at least one headshot and then she freaks out and leaves. But it doesn't work. Widow is absolutely rolling. It used to be, oh, it's a, it's a, what is it? Silver gold widow. They suck. Well, now people are more easily able to hit shots and she's absolutely rolling everyone. And me, when I'm on Kiri, she looks at me. The moment I peek, I'm dead. Like I can't. I've tried. I think I've killed one widow. And that's because she was busy fighting or shooting at the DPS that was looking at her at that point. And I was able to get the kill because she was distracted. Any other time, she would shoot me first so that I wouldn't be able to dink her from afar. And it takes forever to convince someone that they need to dive her. Because no one wants to change. Zen, you don't play him for healing. You play him for DBS. You put that Discord orb on. All of everyone shoots that person with the Discord. They fall over. They explode. They're dead. Done. This little shit right here with the nerf to healing. With the healing passive she has. With the amount of damage she can do. Absolutely rolls. Especially because she can get in and out really easily. Kiri. The only reason she's still considered good and lower ranks is because now it's somewhat easier to hit headshots and help your team kill things. And her Suzu can at least help keep someone alive for a little bit longer so you can hopefully get a pick. And that's about it. Because with the projectile size increase, it has become harder to hit headshots on certain characters. Bap, Sim, who else? Bap, Sim, Ash, depending on if she's ADS. Widow, also depending on she's ADS, Tracer. Like so many characters, depending on how their character model is set, it's harder to hit headshots on them unless you're aiming above their head. So, yeah. Well, that's my tier list. I didn't go in as much detail, but my tier list for my ranks, and of course it could be different for everyone at my rank because it's such a large rank. I'm between silver and gold. So that's where most of the player base is. Meaning there's more people playing at my level and can be anywhere and everywhere than there are at higher ranks. So it's not as good. It's not going to be as uniform as it would be in higher ranks when it comes to tier lists. So yay. If you agree, let me know. If you don't agree, let me know. I'd like to see what it's like for other people because even just different areas of the world will have a different tier list. People who play at different times of the day will have a different tier list. So, I'd like to know what you all think. And I'd like to see if we can figure out, you know, maybe... It, my tier list success. Maybe this is my personal, you know, it's my personal tier list. This is what I've seen for the first week. It could very easily change. And there was a leak about from the same guy that leaked all the stuff for this season that turned out to be true. Has another leak. And it says supports are going to be a lot worse. Because they're nerfing all healing between 5 and 10% depending on the character. Just across the board. They're nerfing the DPS healing nerf passive to 10%, but it stacks up to two times, so you can get to 20% anyway, so it's not going to matter. That's not going to do anything. And there's like a few other things, but the posts on the forum had been taken down already. Uh, we don't know if it's true, but it's coming from the same person that leaked all the season 9 stuff that turned out to be true, so be prepared for things to get worse. One thing I do have to say is last season and in previous seasons, it used to be, you know, 
when someone called diff, it could be any type of diff. Oh, my, the supports on that team weren't doing that well. So it was a support diff. Or the DPS weren't doing that well on that team. So it's a DPS diff. Or that tank got absolutely rolling into the ground. It's a tank diff. Now, it's only ever a DPS diff. If your DPS are not better than their DPS, you lose. That's just how it is. Hands down. And it sucks. Because it makes it so one-dimensional. As soon as you get into a game, oh, two minutes into the game, one of my DPS is 0 and 3. The other one is 1 and 4. And their DPS have 6 kills each with no deaths. We're going to lose. Because without our DPS being able to apply that passive and help us get kills, there's nothing we can do. So, 